Part of my job as a scientist is to help society, you, me, all of us, think more clearly about how our choices will affect the future. We do this by building models of the things we study, trying to make the best model we can with the knowledge and resources we have, and then use those models to answer questions or explore how the systems we're studying might react to the actions we take. This is what we've done in our simulations of future suburban growth in the Southeast. We can take a model that can mimic the patterns of growth in our region's car-oriented suburban cities, and then use that model to help us answer a simple question about the choice confronting us. What happens if we keep doing what we're doing for the next 50 years? This is different from trying to predict exactly what will happen, like a weather forecast predicts the high temperature for tomorrow. That's a true prediction. And with all the complexities that define urban systems, it's exceedingly difficult to build models that can accurately or reliably predict where and how cities will grow decades into the future. It's actually much easier to make predictions about the weather and climate, believe it or not. Instead, we use models to build scenarios, a plausible future pathway that uses the knowledge we do have to simulate what suburban systems in the Southeast could look like if we keep sprawling out with cities built for cars. Now, what we found is that if we continue on our current path, in the next 40 to 50 years, we're likely to end up with a continuous suburban megalopolis stretching from Raleigh all along the Piedmont Corridor to Atlanta. Dr. Rob Dunn calls this Charlanta. The consequences of this choice would include all the things that we've discussed that are already occurring, plus many more consequences, both big and small. In our paper, we focused on the effects on habitat for wildlife. Such unbroken expanses of this suburban system would convert large swaths of existing habitat into inhospitable terrain for most species, while also affecting water quality in our streams and rivers. So here you're seeing some results from the study and the simulation shows that over time, particularly for agriculture, if we kept doing what we've been doing, up to 20% of all agricultural lands could be converted to these suburban type areas um, by 2060. But this is a scenario. It reflects assumptions about the choices we could make now and into the future. A different future is possible if we choose it and can result in very different outcomes for our cities and our environment. So this is one of the choices we are confronting in the Anthropocene. The way we have built our cities in the last 100 years poses some wicked problems in terms of the costs that accrue to the climate, the environment, and our society. But if we choose to confront these problems, the solutions, while not easy to achieve, can be remarkably simple in design, cost, and scope. And I think that's something that should be a hallmark of a Wolfpack solution. Something that works, is beneficial to people and our planet, but also that strives for simplicity. Something as simple as taking a walk. <laughs>